Hello, statistics students. In previous videos, we've learned how to construct a confidence interval for a sample mean if we somehow magically know the population standard D. Then we learned about how to do it in the more realistic case where we didn't have the population standard D. Now we're going to learn how to make a confidence interval for a population proportion P. So P, let's learn our variables here, is our, I call it mythical because we don't really know for sure and it changes all the time anyway, population proportion about which we're trying to learn. For instance, you know, what, uh, what proportion of adult Americans, you know, um, approve of this policy? Well, that number changes every day. Every day you have adult Americans dying and with them their preferences for a policy. You have new people becoming adults. You have people changing their minds. But in theory, that P is, while it's not exactly fixed, it doesn't change much um, today. You know, if something happens in the world, maybe tomorrow a bunch of people will change their opinions and that'll be the new P. But in general, you know, that's that's going to be a relatively fixed number. Then this we call P hat, that's actually its name. And that's our sample proportion. Now you might remember when we had a sample mean, we used X bar, you might think, why don't we use P bar? We will, P bar means something else. So P hat is our sample proportion. And like X bar was a, a point estimate for a population mean. P hat is a point estimate for the population parameter P. And P hat is X over N, X being your number of successes N being your number of trials. So if we wanna know um, what proportion of people support candidate A, I would go out and survey a bunch of people. How many of them supported candidate A would be X. The total number of people I surveyed would be N. So previously, when we estimated a population mean with a confidence interval, our margin of error was a critical value times a standard error. It was Z critical times sigma over root N, or it was T critical times S over root N. Now we're gonna estimate a population proportion we're gonna use P instead of mu. Do not confuse those letters. Mu is a mean, P is a proportion. But the margin of error is still gonna be a critical value times a standard error. So it's still gonna be, in fact, I'll just tell you now, it is gonna be a Z-score, but the standard error is gonna be a little different. So here was our um, confidence interval last week. Mu was, some, was in the middle of the interval with X bar plus or minus E, our margin of error. Now we're gonna have P, our population proportion in the middle of an interval, which will be P hat plus or minus E, a margin of error. So let's talk about what E is, that margin of error. First off, remember that P hat's always gonna be a number between zero and one inclusive. You can say, you know, 42%, but that's 0.42. So the critical value will be a z-score, as I said. The standard error, if we were to, if we were to do um, a sampling distribution for a population proportion, it would be this. So since we don't know what P is, we're trying to estimate P. The standard error for our population proportion I'm sorry, the, um, yeah, the standard error for our population proportion, we're gonna use P hat times one minus P hat all over N. Don't forget to take that square root. And remember that P hat and Q hat are also numbers between zero and one inclusive. So if 48% of people in my sample, that's my P hat, you know, approve of candidate A, then Q hat must be 52%. So that would be 0.48 times 0.52. So 
So my confidence interval looks like this. And on page 321 of our current textbook, we have our step-by-step -step guidelines on how to create and construct a confidence interval. Notice that again, um, a lot of books, um, all the ones I've seen, say NP hat and NQ hat have to be greater than or equal to 10, not five. I'm hearing now that some books are even saying, oh, maybe we wanna to go to 15. But we, we are going to stick with NP hat and NQ hat being greater than or equal to 10. If that's not true, then the sampling distribution of the population proportion, think of that for a minute. What is a sampling distribution? If you take all samples of size N from the population, and now find what proportion um, of successes are in each sample. So if the sampling distribution of the population proportion will be approximately normal, if these conditions are met, kind of like we did with the normal approximation to the binomial. So I've already in the past talked to you about this handout. This is from Lee Kuchera. She's kind of the guru of teaching AP stats. And those of you who want to take the AP stats test, there are some phrases on here. You use these phrases, you're going to do better on the test. Here we are for a confidence interval. I'm 100 or whatever percent confident that the population proportion or mean, whatever it is you're measuring, you would use the correct term, of whatever is between this number and this number. So remember, we don't say that we're, um, we don't make probability statements about the parameter, we make it about our sample, I mean, our sampling procedure. So I'm 100% confident that the mean is between this and this. More likely, I actually prefer this one because it makes sure that you get that correct. I am blank percent confident that this interval captures the true proportion or mean of this. And then here's what a confidence level C is. <clears throat> so when we, um, when you answer questions on tests and quizzes, I'll expect you to use terminology like that on the quiz. I would expect that again, to be as precise as possible, I would ask you to use the second of those two, which is um, I am so I am C percent confident that the interval blank contains the true population proportion or the true population mean, whatever it is we're measuring. So we have a confidence interval for a population proportion and the circled part is our E, our margin of error. What if we have a fixed margin of error? For instance, I'm taking a poll and you know, I'm trying to see what percentage of people support candidate A. And I want that to be accurate to within um, four percentage points. So I want it to be something no more than plus or minus 0 0.04. Well, here's my margin of error and we're gonna say E is fixed. Well, if I want to be set, you know, C percent confident, Z is fixed. The um, P hat and Q hat, those come from the sample. The only thing I have any control over is N. So solving for N, I get this expression. Please, um, rather than just writing it down, work through it, make sure you understand the algebra. There's a little problem with that formula though. Did you catch it? Go back and take a look. Did you catch the error, the problem? It's not a math error. We're trying to find N, that sample size, you know, how big does our sample have to be <clears throat> in order to get that fixed margin of error? We're trying to 
to determine that before we take the sample. But we don't know P hat and Q hat until after we take the sample. This presents a conundrum. So we have two choices here. N is again the minimum value, minimum sample size necessary to get that fixed margin of error. Like we did previously, we're always, if n does not come out to be a, an integer or actually a whole number, we are going to always, always, always round up in this case because n is the minimum size necessary. So we have two choices. If you have an idea of what p is or, and hence p hat, use that. For instance, if you had a survey last week where 48% of people approved of candidate A, you can use 0.48 for P hat and 0.52 for Q hat, assuming something horrible hasn't happened in the last week that you think is massively going to change support for candidate A. So again, you gotta think, you cannot just plug and chuck. If you have no idea of what P is, and hence P hat and Q hat, you can let both of them equal 0.5, and that will maximize this value here. How do we know that? Well, we're gonna go back to first year algebra. Let's take P hat times one minus P hat. Well, we can call that X and one minus X which you can see is a parabola, y equals x minus x squared. And it turns out being this parabola, you can see that it has um, x-intercepts or zeros of zero and positive one, which means it reaches a maximum value at 0.5. So if you let p hat and q hat or p hat times one minus p hat, be 0.5, this quantity will be maximized. Z critical won't change because it depends on what your um, confidence level is. And E is fixed as well. Don't forget that squared. A lot of people forget that. So if you have an idea of what P hat and Q hat are, use that to get the minimum N necessary for your fixed margin of error. If you have no idea, then set both of those equal to one half. If you do that, then your, um, your sample size will guarantee, this sample size here will guarantee a fixed, um, that you'll be within that fixed margin of error. So we've now covered how to estimate means and proportions. We don't, we don't estimate them with just a point estimate like X bar or P hat. We say, well, yeah, okay, it's probably X bar or P hat, whatever it is we're measuring. But I want a little fudge factor, a little plus and a little minus so that I can be pretty confident that this interval contains that true parameter, whatever it is. So Keep in mind that we are looking for these margin of, margins of error and the different ways of calculating a margin of error. If you're doing a mean and you know sigma, there's one way of calculating the margin of error. If you're um, estimating a population mean but you don't know sigma, there's another um, formula for margin of error that's very similar. If you are trying to estimate a population proportion, then you, it, there is a third formula. Keep in mind that they're all built on the same structure of critical value times a um, standard error. So that's all I have for you now. Have a great day.